Hi there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Another episode of Broken Stuff. This time, it's my mount again. This is the same CEM40 mount, which had the, uh, the issue with the power button. This time, however, there's something wrong with the gear or something like that. I will run a small clip now where you can hear the problem. I think that's uh, clear, right? Something is wrong. The, uh, the graphs of the uh, PhD log viewer will also uh, show clearly that there is an issue with this mount. And what this issue is, that is what I'm going to try and find out in this video. Uh, oh, hold on. Yeah? Hey Dylan. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I'm shooting that video about the uh, this dissection of the mount. What uniform? Ah, <laughs> yes. He he says I need to wear a, a lab coat for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good idea, man. Yeah, speak to you later. Yeah, thanks. Yep, bye bye. Ah, always helpful, Mr. Dylan. But yeah, that's meaningless, of course. But uh, let's indeed do what he says. Ready. Let's get to it. We need to open up this mount. So we need some tools. First we need a hex screw, an, an Allen key I believe. Uh, cue that funny uh, animal clip. Alan, and Alan, uh, Alan. open up this motor mount so we can take a look inside. By the way, this is a bit over the top Dylan. Let's, let's not do that. Okay, open up the mount. I'm so professional, it doesn't fit. Now it fits. There we go. So this mount is belt driven. There's a belt over here. If you press it, it needs to move only two millimeters or something like that. This is like half a centimeter or something. So that might need some tensioning. And um, yeah, let's also see if we can simply see the issue at hand by just powering up the mount and then uh, see what's happening. Let's engage the clutch. When engaging the clutch, I should have now tensioned the uh, the thing as well, and now it is already a bit more tight. But let's see what happens if we turn the thing on and issue a slew in right ascension. I saw it jump there. Did you see that? Let's move back. Hmm. 
There's some material sticking out here. Might this be the cause of this entire issue? Perhaps I need to put some more light on it. So the cop lamp needs to be used at, uh, at daylight too. If you can see here, this belt has a little bit of a wear to it. Let's see where this area on the belt is when slewing. Yes, it seems to be that the damaged part of the belt is inside the housing every time it makes this popping sound. Perhaps if we go to max slewing mode it makes it even clearer. It's every time that marking is on top. Let's go to a slower speed. There it is. So when the marking is here, it makes that sound. Yeah. Perhaps we could see even more if we open up this part of the uh, of the mount to see inside and to see the actual worm uh, being driven by this mount, uh, by this belt. We have three screws. One, two, three. So now we should be able to pull this up and rotate this out of the way. At least that was the idea. That apparently is not the case, but over here we can see the, um, the belt. Now let's try and move it again. There is the little bit damaged part of the uh, of the belt. I think I would like to see it more up close, but then I will have to open it up even further. So I think uh, I'll uh, I'll do that, but uh, then I first need to prep some stuff. And to do that, we need to uh, release these little grub screws, this big one over here and on the other one there's another grub screw. Then the entire counterweight mounting will uh, be able to come off. So we'll loosen this one over here. And then we'll use an Allen screw to Alan! get rid of these two. And then this mounting comes off. So here we have the mounting of the counterweight shaft. The uh, eye polar now is exposed, but uh, that's okay. And then the entire top comes off. And here we see the RA gear, and this is of obviously the worm clutch. So you can quite easily see that when you put on the clutch, it is indeed tilting away so that the RA axis is moving freely. What I intend to do now is I'm going to swap the belt on the RA axis with that of the 
deck axis. The theory being that the RA axis will most likely get more often into a issue as opposed to the deck axis. When your polar alignment is correct, the deck axis has to barely move during shooting a target. The RA axis obviously is moving constantly. Um, I have new belts coming but that will take some time so for the time being I'm going to try and swap the RA with the deck. So let's, uh, let's move ahead and uh, make some uh, room for m actually uh, disconnecting the belt from the RA axis. For this we need to get rid of this little connector and the small board that is behind this connector. So let's move the deck motor out of the way so we can reach these tiny screws over here and this will contain the little sensor for the um, periodic error correction. Let me show you something. So what I've essentially done now is I created room for the belt to move through. This way we can uh, detach the belt and replace it with the one from the deck motor where we obviously also still have to do all this stuff. To uh, get the belt off the sprockets we need to uh, make sure that the uh, motor is not pulling on the uh, on the belt. There are three screws this one this one and this one that we need to slightly loosen there we go and now the tension is a whole lot less and now I need to carefully slide the belt off make sure it is not damaged even more There we are. So this is the culprit. Let's uh, see what the deck looks like. Here we see the deck uh, belt. And the deck belt is tensioned pretty stiffly I must say. And I'm hoping that I do not need to take off the entire dovetail uh, part. What I am hoping is that I'm going to be able to just undo these three screws over here. So these three screws, this one, this one and this one. And then I probably can rotate the, uh, the plate uh, which will allow me to uh, get to the belt position over here. These screws of factory are very very tight. As if they don't want me to get in here. So this is one. This is two. Yes, but not a long one. Okay, are we able to rotate this? Rotate this? Uh, unfortunately, we are not. Okay, then I need to get rid of this entire plate. So, um, yeah. Let's see how we can remove that. It should be these four screws that are 
connected to the entire thing but to get to these uh, four I will probably need to remove the uh, what is it yeah, the, this this attachment point for peripherals so I'm going to uh, start with that and obviously a different size why make it easy right is that this size seems like it now this is a uh, protection plate for protecting the cables of course these four screws now can be removed is it another size is it the size of the mount itself yes it is pretty tight stuff wow there okay wish me luck that I don't drop the entire thing on the floor and I have it detached it would be very hard to do so by the way because of all the cables that are routed through this so it will never drop completely to the floor it will hang off the cables but let's try not to make that happen okay sorry I thought I had a video running I did not <coughs> not going to do it all over again but uh, I'm now uh, detaching the uh, belt from the uh, declination axis yeah this this is the good belt this is the not so good belt you can see threads here and yeah so um I'm going to uh, thread this here through this um, and by doing so I can put it on the sprockets and then uh, it should be uh, mounted correctly I will then have to retension the belt and uh, close everything up and reattach it again there's a hole over here where I can uh, make everything uh, uh, go through so again the bad belt is not this one it is this one yes and if I press it in here I should be able to grab it from this end then I'm going to rotate it do it like this yes so now it is on the small sprocket over here and now I'm going to try and slide it over this big sprocket at the worm gear there so now it is on that's nice and now I need to retension it but first I'm going to close up this assembly um, so that I'm sure that no dust or other nastiness will get into this uh, this area like this uh, let's first do this one this is just a small screw and the other one too So now we need to reattach the declination plate. So it should fit on here like this. Let's put in those four huge screws again. And we use the 
allen key that came with the mount for this. Let's make sure that we do not um, get some cables snagged underneath the screw. And the last one goes in like this. And then we have the last screw on the bottom over there. That was the long screw. And then we have the deck cover again fully attached, but we will still need to uh, put in, put back in the uh, cable protection. Um, it's a bit of a weird assembly because you have to put some screws in between those two cables. So it's a bit fiddly to make it work without actually snagging the cable in the first place. Because that is obviously what you want to prevent with this bracket. So uh, it feels quite snug now. It's the smallest Allen key that I need to use for this. Let's put it in, not all the way, just a little bit, so those screws are actually engaged. Then I can just play around a bit with it and feel if there is no cable underneath. It seems to be correct now. So while pressing my finger on the plate, I'm going to tighten those screws again. You have probably seen one of my other videos, the 40 shades of red of the SEM40 I mean, um, and uh, you will probably also know that there are many many different kinds of SEM40s. This is just one of them, uh, the old one, the 2019 model, and uh, this declination dovetail plate is only seen on those models. I really like it, by the way. It's uh, both the Los Mandy and um, uh, the Fixen style. If you want to make it uh, a Los Mandy style, you need to detach these things and turn them 180 degrees and position them back again. And then it's uh, Los Mandy. Pretty neat. Okay. It's time to go in and remount the RA uh, belt. The deck assembly belt will go in the RA uh, motor. So I'm going to uh, thread it through here, try not to damage it, otherwise we will have not a solution but a problem replacement. I'm going to uh, immediately try and thread it over the uh, over the small sprocket over here and now I'm going to try and pull it over the big sprocket. Come on little belt, you can do it. It's just like a bicycle. I have to slightly move the sprockets and then it will be on. There it is. There we have it. Okay, let's quickly put back that top plate again just to get rid of any dust or something that will sneak its way in. So uh, the big one goes on the bottom. Okay, well, now we have to do the tensioning of the belt. This is too loose, so I need to at least have it a little bit more tense. Um, I saw a document online, a, a manual, an IOPTRON manual that stated that you need to insert a screwdriver here 
while you uh, tighten those uh, screws of the motor assembly. So here we have the, uh, the small sprocket and the motor and if I just apply a little bit force, not too much, on the, on the motor like this and then tighten those screws. I should theoretically have the belt a little bit more tight. Let's see what the effect is. It's now very tight. And if I disengage, actually I think this is, this is correct. I'm going to be happy with this and we need to reattach the uh, periodic error corrector uh, sensor that will need to go in here. Okay, here we have those uh, tiny, 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 tiny screws and we all have to fit this back into the correct position. So this should fit in right here. Thread the, uh, yeah, the top one I do first and then fit in there. That should be it. Okay, um, I will call this correctly mounted. I'm going to leave the mounting open still, but I'm going to now go and do the same thing, the tension of the deck axis. Okay, so now we need to tension this belt. This is completely slack still, so we need to uh, make sure it is correctly tensioned. Again, we need to put a screwdriver in, make sure that the tension is going up and I need to tighten these screws. It's in the open position, let's try the locked position. bit too loose to my taste. Let me try again. I will disengage the screws a little bit. Put a little bit more force on the screwdriver I guess. So, let's power this baby up and let's see if it still works. Let's apply some power and let's first try the declination. Maximum speed. See, now that noise is in the deck axis. exactly like we wanted. Let's try the... Oh. Smooth as butter, as they say. Okay, let's uh, switch it off again with my patented just pull the plug method and let's put back the covers there's a hole on the on this shaft which should line up with the hole in in the uh, counterweight bracket thing so there we are let's uh, put it back in 
first do it by hand, then by the tool, and then we can re-engage these grub screws over here. This is the wrong size. This one I need is over here. This, if I recall correctly, is the housing for the uh, RA axis. Everything should be able to fit inside without cables, snacks and those kind of things. It feels like it is a bit tight. Why is that? I think that is because of the... Oh yeah, that's because of the uh, periodic error cable. I need to make sure that I'm not snagging that. There. This clicked in place. That is what I wanted. Okay, now we need to put on the housing of the deck axis and you can only achieve that when you move the, uh, the mount in this orientation. So there we have it, it's closed up, we have a mount that should theoretically, um, where, are you? where are you, hello. So we should now have a mount that works in our A axis and should not work that well in declination axis. So until next time, um, if you like this video, press a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, wish me luck that this operation went okay and that the patient is still alive and kicking. See ya.